Okay, early ice. Uh, just had Christmas, so it's Christmas holidays, and um, just on a quick little afternoon mission out here on Lake of the Woods. Um, just left for my house, and uh, the goal is to catch some dinner, so walleyes, perch. I fish out here quite a bit, and usually, I've, this is my fourth trip out, I've tried, I like to try a new spot every time. So I've been out three times so far. It's been okay, but not awesome. Um, I've caught, you know, a few fish to eat every night, but I haven't had really, um, maybe the biggest is 21, 22 inches. And, you know, not, not awesome, you know, haven't had a, like an awesome bite yet. So uh, maybe today's gonna be a little better. Weather's finally warmed up a little bit. We've had a brutal cold snap, but, you can see there was a lot of slush out here and it's kind of hardened off in a lot of places now. Um, still a little bit, but not not too bad. Um, probably, you know, eight inches of ice or so. So lots of lots of ice to run around on the machine. So we're gonna drill some holes. This is the spot. Um, I haven't fished this in probably five or six years. It's a spot that used to be, a, we used to call it an unmarked little hump. Um, it was one of my dad's favorite spots and it's now um, the new Lake Master card for Lake of the Woods, and, or the Ontario card, um, actually has this little particular spot on it. So we're gonna fish it, um, see what happens, hopefully catch some dinner. Pretty crazy, like with augers now, like literally a little hand drill to drill a hole. Like never thought I would come to this. I was uh, a, a funny story actually, a few years, probably like three years ago, I, around this time of year, I go into Lake of the Woods Sports and I told Brian, hey, I need to get a new auger. And he's like, oh, I'll get an electric one. And I'm like, nah, I don't want an electric one. I mean, I do a lot of guide trips, used to do a lot of guide trips. And, you know, over the course of the day, might fish for several different species, drilling lots of holes. And when you get into late, later in the season, I just didn't trust um, the batteries maybe necessarily. But, um, so I bought a four stroke gas auger uh, a couple, a week after that, I had some friends from the U.S. that came up here to fish with me, and they had an electric auger, and I tried it once, and I was just like, oh, you idiot. Um, they're so nice, you can just jump off the machine, I mean, just that fast, hit the button, drill a hole, no mess, um, no fighting with the motor, I mean, I've been really pretty happy with them, so. Uh, if you do a fair amount of ice fishing, the electric is a good investment. I learned the hard way. And I got a four stroke for sale still, if anybody wants one, just hit me up. Actually has the rattles in the back of it, similar to a buckshot. Just a little different profile, a little different action. Probably gonna start with the buckshot. And uh, it's a little bit windy. I probably, I don't really love fishing in a shack unless I'm like guiding and I have to. Um, I like to fish outside, move around. If I fish a hole for like three minutes and I don't see one or catch one, we're going to the next hole. So I don't have a lot of patience. Uh, but yeah, we'll start with the buck shop. Um, when this gets froze up, we'll uh, we'll go to one of the other one of the other outfits. So as far as the setup goes, I'm using these new. Uh, they're well, they've been around for a couple years now. The Loomis IMX Pro ice rods, and they're I'm spoiled. Um, they're, they're high-end, beautiful rods, but if you, you know, take your ice fishing seriously and fish, you know, for walleyes or crappie, some of these fish that, um, you know, can bite really light, um, you, you know, the sensitivity is incredible. They're very light, pleasure to fish with, so. I'm running those, a um, few different actions I'll talk about, but um, they all have eight pound power pro, and then usually just put an eight pound fluorocarbon leader on there. Number one thing with spoons, like, in the open water anymore, I never use meat. Like never, ever, don't need it. Um, still like to use some meat during, on the ice, under the ice. So I, I just like to tip my the spoon with a minnow head. If you use a whole minnow, um, the package is just too big. Like the whole bait is just too big. And then also the minnow just sort of disrupts the action of the spoon. It's just not gonna look as nice. So that's all you need. Need a little bit of meat on there and uh, this thing should, do just fine catching some fish so we uh i'm sort of on the edge of this hump right now um so we're just gonna bounce around try just like i say give every hole a couple minutes and see if we can figure out what depth the fish are at and if there's any fish here if there's not we're gonna fire up the little hummingbird again and uh, pick another hump to try but i think we'll be fine here sometimes if there's like too many like that it's just the it's not necessarily the big ones but maybe Feeling kind of small, but maybe 
This just seems like a school of perch. I drop it down and there's a bunch of fish. Oh, a little walleye that time. Okay, well, we're getting to action. We just gotta upgrade the size a little bit. big but we're uh, this feels like something edible anyways oh, yeah this little walleye so he just came flying up off the bottom I'm gonna keep this one just because he's sort of hooked deep and uh, just got it right away look at that I really wanted her so yeah for my wife and I a few of those couple of those, couple perch, living good. So yeah, again, with the spoon, um, you know, just the minnow head. You can use, I, I kind of, I get live ones every once in a while just because they're a little bit more of a treat to use. They stay on a little bit better and everything, but you can just get like the frozen little tubs of shiners and use the heads off the frozen ones and those work really good too, but. If you can get your hands on those, um, that's typically what we use. And you know, the the traditional jig and minnow um, definitely still will catch fish. It works. It's just fun. I enjoy using the little spoons just to like, um, you know, in, in conjunction with the with the sonar with the flasher, just to like figure out how to trigger them to bite. It's fun, you know working it and and seeing what you got to do to make them bite it but they they catch them good i've you know for for over like 20 years i haven't used anything but a spoon when i go walleye fishing tip it with a minnow head and sometimes certain colors are better than others gold's always good on lake of the woods especially um you know in the central part the water's a little bit darker um gold and orange um but i'm using a little p sort of pink and white one today also usually a pretty consistent good color and uh, you know if you get these days like I say the wind's blowing a little bit so that's taking the, the putting a little bit of bite into things but it's fairly warm out so just get out here bounce around and you know I just had one hole it was getting bites as fast as I could drop my bait down but a lot of small fish so just gonna keep keep moving around I dropped one down here got a bite pretty quick and uh, you know now we're now nothing's really happening, so I'm probably gonna give it another minute or so, and then probably fire that auger back up and drill drill a few more holes. Try and find a, a hot hole, or just sort of bounce around and get one here, one there, and um, you know that's kind of my routine usually when I come out here on the ice on these you know just short afternoon trips and want to catch a few fish. We've all been there. You guys laugh all you want, but the fish is actually still there. I don't know how, but uh, we're clear. <laughs> I probably didn't need to pull that thing out for this little guy, but that's a nice, decent perch. Yeah, not a big one, but he took it kind of deep, so definitely. His, it's not the prettiest uh, dorsal fin ever on that guy, but it's all right. Just had to go a little easier on the, on the hook setting on that one. Okay, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, when you're, one thing too, like when you're working the spoon, it's not a lot of like big rips, you know? It's more just shaking it, making that rattle make a little noise and uh, just sort of shaking it more than like really making it flutter. But sometimes like, you know, if you got no fish around or anything, you can jig it a little more aggressively and it just, you know, probably has a little bit more ability to call them in. And then the other thing I like every once in a while, just sort of lift it up off the bottom a bit. And if there's some that are like sort of camped out, hanging out on the bottom, maybe, 
you're not spotting them. Um, sometimes that'll just sort of lift them up and then you know they're there or they actually will come up and they think the bait's getting away and they come and bite it. But when it comes to like picking spots, you know, a lot of the same humps that are good in the summer are good in the winter too, just maybe a little bit deeper. Um, but just like anything, it's sort of trial and error. Like I said, I often, you know, fish a new spot every time I come out just because the Lake Master map, um, there's so much more stuff. Like the, all the little stickouts are on there. You can drive right up to them and uh, you're drilling a hole like basically on the structure. There's not like a ton of searching around like we used to have to do in the old days, but sometimes, you know, points, flats, humps, um, just keep moving around. And then when you, you know, find those really good spots, uh, always kick the hole mounds over so every other person doesn't see your holes. And uh, yeah, kind of a slow moving one coming up to it. got if it's a perch it's gonna be a real beauty and if it's a walleye it might be just kind of a small one but yeah small walleye you know when it comes to drilling out some of these spots too you look at the how the this is a little this is a little sort of hump point coming off of an island and um, I want to drill kind of near the tip of it um, but you, you want holes that are sort of flat on the bottom so when you put your flasher in if it's all kind of broken um, indicating that you're like on a ledge those usually aren't as good um, I want those nice flats where like a group of walleyes can congregate together um, but close to the deep water so some of the you know a good spot is is gonna have a lot of like flat on top of it um, you know not just the volcano rock if the if the humps that are like really steep usually aren't as good um, but and then yeah when I drill the spot out I just kind of you know, I've sort of drilled in a circle, just so I'm gonna cover a variety of depths and then hopefully make contact with some fish, so. And then that's when, you know, if you find a good hole, you can put a waypoint on it. I got a little hummingbird screen on my machine that I can just drop a waypoint on, and then when I come back, I can just go right to that spot, but. Um, and then, you know, when you come back and if it's, you know, a crap day and you wanna set up the shack, um, you'll have a good place to sort of do it. That might have took my middle, maybe. Oh. Okay. Doesn't feel huge, feels maybe a little better. Okay. Nice little dinner, dinner fish. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Doesn't feel super big, but let's see what we got. Getting lots of action, just can't catch any of the, the big guys today. That's a nice perch, that's a good little keeper. You know, uh, one of the things, the last few years we've seen, especially, you know, on Lake of the Woods, um, a lot more perch showing up. And like nice, you know, that's that's kind of a smaller one on the keeping side, but um, still a pretty decent one. That's a good, you know, good little eater. They cook up fast, um, quick, they're, uh, they're good. And, it's funny because like growing up around Kenora, uh, we would never keep perch when I was a kid. Um, there was the, I don't know, the perception people had was that they're all full of worms, um, no good to eat, just sort of a trash fish, steal your minnows. Um, I've seen lots of them sort of, you know, just get left on the ice for the foxes or birds. And, um, but they are, they are excellent to eat, probably my favorite now. Um, and in the winter, not very often do, that you see any of the worms in them. And if you do, they're, uh, they're completely harmless. Um, you can cook them and uh, the, the little worms just sort of cook right out. But you can cut them out too if you want. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you don't, you don't hardly see them very often even. And uh, man, they're, they're great. 
save a few walleyes and just keep keep some of those perch when you get into them out here. So um, we're putting together, uh, we're gonna accomplish the goal of catching dinner here tonight, but we're sort of doing it the hard way out in the wind. And um, I mentioned it earlier, but the, the little pop-up probably would have been a nice plan today. But that being said, I haven't really found a hole though that, it, that it's just been like, you know, kind of one after the other. And if it was, it was sort of smaller fish. I got another mark here coming to check it out maybe. Um, but, you know, the, the, the shelters are nice, especially when it's windy. If it's not windy, even if it's cold out, it's usually pretty tolerable for fishing, but that wind really can take the fun out of things um, and make it, make it seem more like a job than, um, than it needs to be, but. You know, with the electronics now, obviously a lot of a lot of anglers are using the forward-facing sonar, mega imaging. You know, you're probably looking at my sonar, wondering, man, he's still stuck in the '90s with his flasher. But um, obviously, the forward sonar that we have now is uh, is pretty deadly. I'm just using an old Ice 55 flasher, um, and you know, for me. I'm rolling on the snowmobile a lot, so they're just bulletproof, very durable, easy to use. The little buckshot strikes again. And, uh, you know, the the new like Mega Live and, and the live sonar is, is really good. If you can, you know, and I know a lot of people are using it now. I'm gonna jump on board here at some point this season, but just for coming out for these quick trips. I mean, I can pack that flasher on the snowmobile and, uh, you know, not have to bring a sleigh or bring, you know, bring really a much of anything. Um, so that's kind of nice, but for sure the, you know, the live sonar shoots a lot wider angle. So you can cover, you know, especially if you're in a shelter, you can cover a little bit wider area. If you're going out for crappies and, you know, even looking for walleyes on some of these flats, you can throw it down in the forward mode and sort of shine it around and like, oh, okay, the school of fish is over here or it's over there and then go drill on top of them. Really makes life easy, but you know, just for going out and catching fish, the flasher is still pretty deadly. There's actually a fish down there right now. I'm gonna go get a new minnow, maybe catch a couple more and then, um, you know, probably call it a night, but we're not getting any of the big ones. So sorry for that, but lots of action and I'm gonna be eating excellent tonight. like a better mark. A little bit better. Maybe. I'm not calling it a big fish, but it's a definitely a better one. Oh, I lost it right there. Nice walleye. <laughs> I actually like upgrade the hooks on these too, where uh, that's a little Gamagatsu G finesse treble and they're a high-end treble, we put them on a lot of the bass baits. And, um, but they're nice, I put them on a lot of my little spoons too that I jig with and they're just razor sharp um, and uh, you know, really don't lose very many fish on them at all. But that one just kind of stuck me on the, on the edge of the ice and part of ice fishing happens. Oh, we're freezing up a little bit here. <laughs> we're gonna do take this one a little bit serious, more serious than the last one that we just lost on the side of the hole. We gotta show you guys at least one nicer fish here today, hopefully. Oh, no, right there again on the ice. <laughs> Jeff's blooper reel this afternoon. <sighs> Little <Littler> guy. <laughs> we'll get this one in. <laughs> yeah, that's how they're supposed to kind of eat it. See, he really wanted it, but. So that one's a little bit small, but 
Um, still decent little eater and he was just hooked bad so I'm not gonna throw him back he probably wouldn't make it um, so we'll keep them and uh, we're gonna eat good Feels a little bit better, maybe. <laughs> okay. A little bit more respectable. <laughs> that was on the little coffin spoon. I'll show you that in a sec, but yeah, a little nicer. Chunky little walleye. Better. Glad I landed one finally. <laughs> yeah, that's a little spoon's freezing up, but that's just a little another similar to the buckshot. We got the rattle chamber in the back, but uh, a little different shape. Um, and uh, yeah, again, that's the little G finesse trebles on there, Gamagatsus, and like I mentioned, just like razor sharp. And then they're also like a pretty thin diameter, so they're still fine for the smaller fish, but they're strong. So if you do hook a lake trout or a big pike or a big walleye, um, you know, you're not gonna, and you gotta muscle them a little bit around the hole, you're not gonna like just open the hooks up. So they're strong, good quality hooks. I like to put a little snap or a split ring um, on the spoon as well, just to kind of give it a little bit more action. So you can see I've got a little, little snap on there but I usually either put that or a, some of them come with split rings but um, it just allows the bait to kind of move around and be a little freer but I think that's about it for now for today we uh, we braved the wind um, hands are chilly and I got dinner so great success um, but yeah we're gonna go uh, check out a couple more spots maybe for tomorrow and uh, you know, make our way back to the house. Got a nice snowmobile ride. It'll be nice and warm on the machine. And uh, but yeah, that's a good afternoon on Lake of the Woods. Just miss some of the bigger fish maybe. Uh, but you know, get out here, drill a bunch of holes, use the sonar. If you don't see any fish, onto the next hole, keep them bouncing around. Cause the, the fishing's good out here. Um, and you know, if you're not seeing them, um, you gotta move a little bit. Sometimes it's only, you know, a few feet away. Um, a little bit shallower, a little bit deeper, but find the flats and uh, catch lots of fish out here. All right, for any of the gear that you saw in the video today, uh, check out sportsheadquarters.ca or drop in and see the boys at the shop. They got all this stuff and a ton more, anything you need to go catch some fish out on the ice.